Greetings, beautiful earthlings. My name is Star. If you are new here, I don't know how you found me, but I am super glad you did. And if you are returning, y'all, the real MVP, you already know. So I have band-aids. Don't look at those. <laughs> I look like a little kid with band-aids all over my fingers. But um, today I'm very excited to get back to filming. If you guys were following me on Instagram, you know I was injured there for a couple days. I did embarrassingly hurt my back trying to pick up my baby child and that was the universe's way of telling me I needed to slow down because I was trying to do 8 million things at once. I am a workhorse right now. This Mars energy is giving me lots of workhorse vibes. So I'm just working really hard to, um, you know, stay busy. <laughs> so <laughs> I've been doing 8 million things. The universe kept telling me I needed to take a break. I was refusing to listen to that. So the universe made me take a break. So that's what happened. But if you guys are following along with this series, I have gotten you guys as far as the lovers in that word document. So as you will see in every video of the Learn the Right Away Tarot series, we do have that Google Docs document link down there for you guys. That is write-ups to follow along with every card in the series. So far I have gotten us to the lovers. I was gonna work really hard on it last night and I was like I need to listen to my body. I need to rest. I need to stop trying to do everything. So I'm gonna use this weekend as best as I can to pump out as much of those as I can because I've got a bunch of paid readings I need to catch up on um, starting like Monday. So I need to really start uh, maybe slowing down the series a little bit um, I might just dedicate one or two days out of the week to filming these videos and try to utilize the rest for readings and all the other things that I'm doing. So um, we're going to go ahead and jump back in. I apologize. Today's video is late. Like I said, you guys follow me on Instagram. You'll already know all of that. You already know what's going on with me. But um, I am very excited to announce that I am going to try to start mixing in some new videos. I didn't have any passion for filming anything but the series there for a little while. So I'm finally getting ideas going. I got a couple things that I want to try and film this week to throw in the mix with these. So um, we'll see how that goes. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do first. I have way too many ideas in my little brain right now. So today's card is the Devil card. And if you guys are brand new to this series, I do have the book and the deck that I'm using linked in the description box. I can no longer show you guys the book because I have it all set up on a little stand right here for me so that I'm not screaming into the microphone. So this is the devil card if you guys are unfamiliar with it. And I know a lot of people will look at this card like an omen, such as the death card, such as the tower card. This card is nothing to be afraid of, you guys. But this is a very interesting card. So clearly we got an image of the stereotypical devil here and I do believe this is based off of Baphomet imagery so I could be wrong here but I'm pretty sure Baphomet does not have a gender it's usually uh, shown with um, female chest areas so I'm not sure if it's a male or a female it's not something that I know anything about, so I could be totally wrong. I was trying to check with a friend before this, and I just did, I should have done this beforehand. I didn't realize what card I was on, but um, yeah. So don't hate me if I'm wrong, but Baphomet is also not the devil. It's a whole different god in and of itself. So. I'm just going to get that out of the way because a lot of people think this is what the devil looks like in Christian imagery. Sure, that's what they portray the devil to be. However, when you see Baphomet imagery, it is not usually the devil. They're two different entities. So um, for all intents and purposes, this is what the Christian imagery of a devil looks like. We know that the Rider Waite Tarot is a very Christian, very Catholic type of um imagery if you guys have been following around and following along in the series so I have not actually read through this page honestly because I do know quite a bit about the devil card so um, let's go ahead look at the keywords here mind you guys the keywords are not in this book I know I have said that in past videos but I've noticed the numbers on these videos are fluctuating so I feel like people are just tuning into specific cards so if you guys are new here this um, 
the keywords that I use do not come from this book. They come from Labyrinthos, and I am not using the app anymore because I did buy the actual Golden Thread deck, which comes with the little insert that has all of the keywords that the app has. So, um, mind you, the keywords will change ever so slightly how, whichever website you look at it, but I use the Labyrinthos keywords for these because they're kind of just basic across the board. So uh, for the death card upright, you've got the keywords end of a cycle, beginnings, change, and transformation. And then for the death card reversed, the keywords are fear of change, not letting go, and stagnation and decay. So um, the interesting thing about this card you guys will see here in a minute, this actually is the parallel of the lovers card. So that's why we've got the lovers down there, but they're chained up, right? This is the parallel of that. So I always think of this as the reverse mirror image of what the lovers would look like in the underworld. So that's pretty cool. Let's look at what this says here in the book for this. Sorry if you guys see me looking off camera and dazed like a crazy pants. I'm reading from the book. That's so that I'm no longer screaming into the microphone and doing this. So it says, as soon as this card appears, it is clear that the threshold of the taboo has been crossed. What was hitherto surging under the surface is now visible. And that is the advantage and the challenge all at once. So if you get this card in a spiritual reading, it means bring light into the darkness and you will find a lot of old junk and new treasures. If you get this as your card for the day, it means you have the opportunity to knock off a pair of old horns. If you get this in a love and relationships reading, it means it is not a sign of disaster and certainly nothing to be ashamed of. In fact, it is usually a sign of quality when the problematic aspects of a relationship come out in the open. And if you get this in a success and happiness reading, it means take all the time you need in order to face the unknown and then learn what you can use of it and what not. So um, if you guys watch tarot pick a cards, you watch tarot readers on YouTube, they will refer to this as kind of the addictions card. Um, I'm not sure how much of that will be talked about in this book, but when they talk about devil behavior, devil tendencies, things like that, whether it is upright or reversed, I know it doesn't hold those meanings in the keywords, but people tend to look at this as the addictions card in tarot when they are doing um, really big spreads because it's just showing that there is a uh, less than favorable type of behavior coming from that person, usually indicates some kind of obsessiveness, some kind of addiction, things like that. So let's give them a little pointer here. The first one we're gonna look at very clearly, figures, position, or pose. So we got three figures here. I'm gonna come to this side. We got three figures. We got the devil dude here in the middle, and we got the two lovers down here. I just noticed, you guys, they have horns and tails. That's kind of funny. This is a very stereotypical image card. Um, again, I'm calling it the devil for all intents and purposes. I don't think this is what the devil looks like. I'm pretty sure this is based off of Baphomet imagery. This is almost identical to it, but this image here looks more masculine. Again, I don't think Baphomet has a gender. I am not sure on that though. So um, the figures position or poses here, it says parallels with the lovers and the hierophant are obvious. Um, maybe the two lovers have spent time and energy hauling the great statue of the devil on its stone plinth out of the darkness. The next one we got here are the horns on all three figures. So see these little guys? They have little horns. And then this dude here has horns. I'm from California, everything's a dude. <laughs> so. A sign of uncivilized nature, they signify, sign, yeah, that's a word. Whew. A sign of uncivilized nature, they signify not so much unfaithfulness often associated with the horn image as with everything in us which remains original and unrefined, which can be a curse or a blessing. So the next one we have here are the bat wings and claws. So this is looking at this dude's wings here, as well as his claws down here. His, her, it's. This dude, dude is a gender non-specific term. <laughs> so bat, an animal of great sensitivity, nocturnal, well able to orient itself or orientate itself in the dark. Is orientate a word? 
That doesn't sound right. Orient, orientate, orientation. Keep going. So, um, well able to orientate itself in the dark. The taloned feet represent the bird element air, the devil as an earth spirit. So the next one we got here is the triangular head of the dude. So the downward pointing pentagram warns against negative energy that pulls everything down with it. It is an invitation to find a personal quintessence which points downward, in other words, is grounded. So I think that one is talking about that um, addictive personality, those um, obsessive traits, things like that, where it's talking about uh, pulling everything down with it. The next one is the goat's haunches, K. Okay. That is this dude's little fluffy legs. So let go of prejudices. The goat symbolizes the drives and instincts which every animal has. Don't brand anybody as a scapegoat. Equally, follow your own instincts. The next one we have here is the cube, which is what this dude is perched on, not sitting on, perched on, right there. So it says, a symbol for the material, the black cube, the holy of holies in some religions, example, the Kaaba in Mecca. In the Western world is a symbol of unworked material and unexplored self. The next one we have here is the chains, and you can see very clearly the lovers here are chained to this block. I have seen some very interesting renditions of this card, and my the one that sticks out to me the most is the Vanessa Tarot imagery. It's so ridiculous, as it looks nothing like this. It's like a girl seducing a guy there in bed, but she has him chained. It's really funny. So um, the chains for this warn against dependency, especially in the form of a vicious circle. Positive. However, this is the card associated with yoga. Literally means yoke. Voluntariness. The chains lie loose. Acceptance of material bonds. That's interesting. So the next one we have here is the torch. Is there one torch? Oh, look at that. Their little tails are different. Do we talk about that? Yeah, we do. That's interesting. Okay, so the next one we're talking about here is a torch. Come on, pointer. In, in this dude's hand right here. In the below position. So, the torch stands for our mission to bring light into the darkness. That means differentiating between positive and negative. Example given, attraction and repulsion. The devil, through... The devil, though, mixes them up at first. The next one is the symbol of the hand. I'm guessing we're going to talk about some quintessence here. So the opposite or the extension of the high priest sign of blessing, as we've seen in multiple cards. Uh, here, all fingers are opened, which means everything is openly visible. We look into a black box and discover hitherto unknown yearnings or garbage. Okay. Um, the only time they talked about quintessence was with the pentagram on top of the head, so that's interesting. <laughs> the next one we're going to talk about is what I just said, where I was like, oh, their little tails are different. So let's see if I can get you in there. If you guys really look at that, sorry, YouTube, I don't know if I'm supposed to give an, a nudity warning for images like this. We'll just do that. Um, their tails are different. So this dude here has a fire tail. The girl has a tail of what looks like a bunch of grapes. So it says, like the horns, man came down from heaven to earth, not only as an angel, but also as an ape from the trees. The task is to acknowledge and fashion what remains of our primordial nature. So those tales also remind me, remember this image is the mirror image of the lovers. If you remember the lovers card, they were next to the tree of knowledge and the tree of life. That's also what those remind me of uh, with those different leaves on the trees. So. Um, I apologize if you can hear my baby child out there squealing her head off. I told you guys she'll do it eventually in one of these videos. I like how when I said she would do it, she didn't do it for three videos. I was very shocked, but it's because she took a nap. So <laughs> now she's awake. She's having a grand old time. She's out there squealing her little head off. So bless her heart. She's going to be a singer, I hope. 
So um, I really hope you guys were able to retain some of that information. I know I did kind of fly through it. I'm trying to get a couple of these done really quickly. Um, like I said, the Devil card is a very interesting card for you guys to look, dif look at different renditions of. Um, it changes a lot like a lot a lot across the board in every single deck I've ever seen. Uh, they very rarely stick to this Baphomet type imagery. Again, not trying to offend anybody. I don't know much about Baphomet. If you guys follow Baphomet, things like that, I, I'm sorry I'm butchering all of that. But um, yeah, so I, I don't know what else I can say about this card. When you get this card, I have begun attributing it to those addictive traits, obsession, things like that. Um, for some reason, the keywords of this upright are playfulness. Like that doesn't, that never makes sense to me. Materialism, hedonism, playfulness, and addiction. So at least it does have that addiction in there. Um, did I not read you guys the right definition for that? Y'all, I totally read you the death card keywords. I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> I am so sorry about that. Usually I write these down and I haven't had a chance, so I thought I would just jump in with this. So, okay, if you guys are still here, the keywords for the devil card upright are materialism, hedonism, playfulness, and addiction. And the keywords for the devil card reversed are freedom, release, and restoring control. I can't believe I mixed those up. Um... The word death and the word devil are just very close and as you guys can tell I cannot see anything. I am super blind and they're both very teeny tiny, very next to each other. So um, yeah, the next couple are getting really fun, really interesting. So I really hope you guys are enjoying the series so far and please continue to check back to that Google document so that you can see how far we've gotten if you guys are not following me on Instagram. But um, as always, you guys, my socials, my booking info, and my um, wish list are all down there for you guys all the time. I might be bumping up my reading rates because I've actually been getting very, very steadily booked full with paid readings lately and it's getting a little overwhelming, so I might have to bump those prices up a little bit. So um, I am super excited to jump into the next ones. You guys, we got the tower card and then we got the star card. I have been waiting so patiently to get to the tower card and the star card because in chronological order, this is starting to get to the good stuff. We're starting to get fun in the story and I am very excited. So I'm sorry this one ran a little bit long. It's my first time coming back in a couple of days to film. So I'm really excited to be back. I hope you guys are all doing okay. And I'm really glad to see the interaction with this series, even though the numbers aren't trending the way that other videos do that's totally fine as long as some people are interacting with the series some people are learning some people are sticking with it I'm very proud of you guys and I know that you guys are the ones that are still here right now as I'm speaking so that's why I'm speaking to you guys very proud of you guys you guys are the best and I appreciate you so much you guys are such troopers so um Let's go ahead and jump into the next one, you guys. Again, try not to binge any number of these. <laughs> I try to release one a day for that reason. That way you guys follow one a day and you don't binge them. But I know sometimes you forget, come back to the channel and then there's five new videos. So it happens, but take responsibility for your learning. Please be kind to yourselves, my friends. And um, I hope you guys have a beautiful, wonderful day wherever you are when this video reaches you, my friends. And I can't wait to see you in the next one. Namaste.